the future is here here now i just maybe i just had a thought pop into my head you know there's the, the tv show and the secret life of pets and this is really r- lifting the lid on that secret it, it's letting <laughs> us know what they're actually fe- you know feeling and allowing us to to make a difference that that i can't really overstate the importance of early intervention um and even just the peace of mind of knowing that your pet is healthy that yep. that they're getting that that great zest score so they're living a mentally fulfilling life so even for our well pets that stay well we can we can really make measurable difference to their to their life which is ultimately what we what we all want welcome to the call the vet show the podcast that helps pet parents understand and optimize the health of their furry family so they can live the full and happy life you want for them and here's your host veterinarian dr alex avery Hello, kia ora. Welcome back to another episode of The Call the Vet Show. I'm your host, veterinarian Dr. Alex, and today we're joined with a very special guest. I'm speaking with Guillaume, who is the founder of a company called Maven, who are revolutionising the pet care industry with their innovative pet wearables. And if you don't know what pet wearables are, then don't worry, we're diving into all that, as well as how they can benefit the life of your dog or your cat. They really are potentially the key to taking our pet's health to the next level. I'm talking about monitoring treatment of animals that we know are unwell, detecting disease, detecting problems in the early stages when we can actually make the most difference and even optimising the health of those pets who stay healthy for a long period of time. Pet wearables really is potentially incredibly impactful and an absolute game changer in how you are able to care for your pet in the first instance and how you and your vet are able to work towards a solution to whatever problems they develop and whatever life that throws their way in the future. So I'm really excited to bring you this conversation. And so really, without further ado, here's our deep dive into the world of pet wearables and the revolution in pet health care they can provide. Here's this episode's expert interview. Guillaume, welcome along to the podcast. I'm really excited to be talking about a technology that I've been kind of looking at from uh, the sidelines, if you like, for the last few years, but it's something that's really, uh, really developing. So, yeah, great to be joining joining you and and uh, having this interesting conversation, which I'm sure it's going to be. Yes, um, thank you, Alex. It's it's a pleasure to be here. Always happy to to talk about how we help pets with with technology. So, thanks for inviting me. So, we're talking about wearable tech, and there's a couple of kind of secret source bits that you've got up your sleeve. But um, before we kind of dive into the nitty gritty, I'd love to know what drove you into the pet wearable space because i think you've got quite a a a personal story about the realization of how powerful it can actually be yeah it's true so first of all i grew up with pets i always had pets so so first of all i don't know what life is without pets okay and uh, and yeah my background is engineering um biomedic engineering actually so i always felt um eager to do something in terms of technology to improve the life of our pets right and Personally, I have a history with one of my pets when I realized too late that something was wrong, right? So, so the moment I realized something was wrong with um, Tommy, which was a lab mixed with Husky, a big breed, slightly obese, uh, that was getting older, was when Tommy was barking at me so I could help him stand up, right? And so obviously at this time, there's like nothing you could do. I mean, I, I took Tommy to the vet severe joint problems um and i mean just deal with it right and and pay for it um and so i couldn't came across the thought that i should have been able to detect early if something was wrong right i'm pretty sure um there were signs at the time early on like two three months in advance um that if i was like paying attention or if i have some sort of technology i could have been able to detect those early on and treat them early on, right? And maybe the outcome could could have been different, okay? Um, and so that's like the genesis of Maven and, and what we've built today is precisely like leverage technology, leverage data to pinpoint early when something is wrong with a pet, right? So we can understand early on and tackle that issue like day one. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's even when you know, so you kind of been speaking to you before you were aware that this was a, a potential issue with your dog and you knew what to look for but even then it kind of crept up on you 
unawares. And I'd probably say, actually, with with the options that are available now, you may have got it months, even years in advance compared to, you know, when you were, were, were tackling that problem. Yeah, for sure. We know pets don't talk, right? And, and, and we know as pet owners, we struggle with trying to interpret our pets, right? We don't know if they are okay, if they are in pain, if something is wrong. Um, and the best way to help pets communicate it's through technology, right? It's 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 um, it's through wearables, um, through other sort of of, of devices that we can um, get a better sense of what's going on with the pets, right? And and we know that they um, are very good at disguise when something is wrong, right? Particularly cats as well. Um, and so being very granular and and being able to detect like these incremental changes that happen on a daily basis, it's like a crucial step towards being proactive. Uh, on our pets health and and and, and well-being yeah absolutely i mean from from my point of view as a vet it's it can be incredibly frustrating because i'm seeing my patients when they're often brought in at the very end stages of their disease and that's 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 not a criticism of all of the pet parents out there it's incredibly difficult our pets just get on with life they they hide their their illness they they still eat they still want to chase the ball if they're even remotely able uh and so these these signs can be very difficult to pick up on. And then you've got the fact that you're living with them every day. And so those that slow progression is just really bad. And then that gets to a stage a bit like um, your situation where the options available are, are maybe not nearly as good as they would be even a month or two in advance. And, you know, I think to, there's a lot of comparison with human health care um, in the veterinary field. But our, our doctors are very lucky because we'll go to the We'll go to the doctor personally much sooner than we'll notice yeah. a problem in our pet. And like I say, that's not a criticism. So with this technology, so we've said wearables, I guess the 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 um, most common comparison is with the Fitbit, with the step tracker, but it's so much more than that. What 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 are we talking about when we're talking about wearables? Yeah, so maybe it's not just a, an activity monitor, right? So So I mean... Uh, we do um, uh, measure the, the amount of miles, kilometers, whatever it is, calories burned. I mean, th- those things are are, are relevant, um, but they are actually more relevant for the pet owner than they are for, like, clinically speaking about the health of the pet, right? So yeah. Maven, Maven is unique because we, we, because of our position in terms of technology, we can be very granular on the data that we collect about the pet, right? So we have, like, hundreds of features. Um, that map out what's the normal behavior for that pet, okay? Throughout the day, throughout the night, different access, different intensity, uh, different levels, how fast the pet goes between levels from minimum to maximum, uh, things like that. So it, it easily gets complex, um, and each pet is a pet, right? So so, so even the same breed, the same age, could be entirely different depending on the pet owner, depending on the lifestyle. Um, and so we have like a a, a pet specific approach and we've built algorithms capable of detect changes um uh, on each pet behavior right so we learn what's normal for each pet and then we proactively look for changes on the pet behavior right and changes can be things simple as the pet being like less intense in the movement okay so if it's a eight year, eight year old pit bull for example and suddenly the movements aren't as, as intense as as they used to be okay most likely this this pet could be dealing with some sort of osteoarticular problem right um uh, could be signs of the pet being restless in the middle of the night so the pet is 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 uh, dealing with discomfort or waking up more often to drink water whatever it is right um and so our goal is always to, it's always to detect changes on the pet behavior okay that might have a clinical meaning of, of what's wrong, right? And then it's not only the hardware. There's also a mobile app um, where we keep asking questions and then there's virtual checkups. There's a Maven journal where the pet owner also inputs relevant data, okay? Because a pet being lethargic could mean all sorts of things, right? But then we know this pet is diabetic or we know this pet has allergies or we know this pet is senior. Um, and that leads to different outcomes, different diagnoses, right? And so it's it's like... Maven is the most comprehensive uh, data structure or data collection for a single pad. Um, and the goal with it is, is to reach some sort of certainty of what might be wrong with that pad, right? And act the moment we know that. 
Cool. So we so you mentioned they're kind of are they lethargic or their activity levels, but is it able to determine, you know, pick up the different movements for different activities? So I'm thinking, you know, when it's eating or when that dog's drinking or when they're scratching, uh, because they're all presumably quite different movements. uh, And and yeah, it's not just measuring just solely activity or, or steps, if you like. Yeah, so b- because we are very granular on the data, uh, because we have like these hundred uh, uh, features to map the, um, the pet behavior, um, we are doing some tests precisely to be able to detect those changes, right? Scratching is a very intense and, and quick movement, okay? Um, and our preliminary test tells us that we can easily detect scratching, right? Um, uh, and so as we go, as we have more scale, we do want to label more specific behaviors such as uh, drinking, eating, uh, uh, um, as, as you mentioned, right? So um, today from those 100 features, we map like deep sleep, quiet, active, excited, running around, playing, whatever it is. Um, but, but we want to be very specific um, because like eating, drinking and scratching are super relevant in terms of, 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 of clinical validation yeah. right um the same thing for respiratory rate okay so i have i have enough data and i'm granular enough to detect changes um when the pet is at like at sleep like midnight pet is completely still okay i can detect slight changes on on on, on the sensor that from which i can then extrapolate respiratory rate okay and that's huge for pets to, to understand the pet right so i don't i don't I don't need to be like 100% accurate on the value for respiratory rate. What I need to be looking for is changes um, yep, on that yep. pattern, right? If suddenly a pet is around like, I don't know, 20, 22, um, and suddenly goes to 27, 28. Okay, so that's that's, that's something we should look look um, into. Um, and so that's that's our approach always in, 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 uh, in Maven is like building evidence from data that something is wrong with this pet and what that might be yeah and a, an example of how useful that can can be you know with that respiratory rate when they're asleep so a dog that's in in heart failure actually sleeping respiratory rate is an incredibly accurate and valuable tool that our pet parents have uh it can be a bit difficult to to get that consistency of when they are in deep sleep but you're right just yep. picking up a, a very slight increase so well the 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 cutoff that we use is over 30 per minute but actually for that specific animal it may be that that change from 18 to 22 is significant and we can jump in yeah. with you know modifying that treatment plan at a much earlier stage than the dog coming to us when it's gasping for breath because its lungs are full of full of liquid so that is you know incredibly powerful and then the the you know being awake at night we've got a known allergic dog well the chances are I mean, there's a number of other things, but they could be scratching all night and you might not yep. see them as a pet parent because yep. you're out of the house in the day, but in the dead of night when they don't have all that distraction going on and they suddenly feel incredibly itchy. So yeah, how powerful this can be for a whole number of conditions. So I guess from that point of view, it's not just our arthritic dogs or our heart failure dogs or our um, allergic dogs that could benefit from this. It's all kinds of different um, d- dogs with different conditions, but presumably as well, Graham, those actually that are healthy um, so that we know that they're staying healthy. Exactly. I mean, we have all sorts of pets using Maven, like like healthy pets, pets with chronic conditions, pets that have recurring allergies, whatever it is, right? So, um, and we've proved our technology is beneficial uh, for both populations, right? So we have use cases and patients that were completely healthy, okay? Um, And let me me give you a specific example. Bella, five-year-old, um a, a labrador okay she was with us for five six months everything was okay um no thing to worry about um and suddenly we get reports of like being lethargic uh vomiting um and we look for more information and then we understood there was some high opacity for bell as well okay and so at this moment we trigger something okay so that's something strange with this pet you should go to the vet and the outcome is um, a diabetes diagnosis. Okay, and now we know this pet is diabetes, right? Okay, so we'll be more tentative to like what's common for diabetes pet, right? And so uh, we focus a lot on ophthalmologic problems. We focus a lot on uh, vomiting. We focus focus a lot on the pet being lethargic. Okay, now we are more even more granular um, on these specific cases. Okay, and for Bella, for five months we were able to tell. Okay. 
the medication is not doing effect. Okay, this pet keeps being lethargic. This pet keeps being uh, keeps vomiting. The eyes are worsening. Okay, and so for for the period of five months, okay, we kept telling the vet um, that the medication was not working. Okay, and it required like four adjustments um, uh, for the pet to stabilize finally. Okay, and yeah. so just because we have data, because otherwise. You go to the vet, your pet gets diagnosed with diabetes, okay, you get medication, you go home, okay? And maybe you have like an appointment schedule for three months, okay? And during this period of three months, you you are like you, the vet and the pet owner, you are like blind on what's going on, okay? Um, and, and, and we know how diabetes could be like severe and could impact like vision and, and, and they have other complications, okay? Um, and so just because we had data for the period of, of five months, we were able to tell, no, it's not there yet. The treatment is not working. Let's look at it again. Let, let's measure uh, 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 glucose on the blood again. Um, and so it's, this is the power, the power of data. Okay? It's, it's understanding not only for this case, we understood early there was a problem on a healthy pet. And the moment the pet gets diagnosed, we were able to tell, no, the treatment is not yet working. The treatment is not yet working. Okay, now the treatment is working. Everything is good. Pet is stable. Let's still monitor it, obviously. Um, but for now, things are okay. Um, so this is the power of data on, on, on the pet care industry. It's like, finally, uh, uh, we put like vets and, and pet owners in control of, of their pet's health, either healthy pets or pets that are already diagnosed or already as a condition uh, maven can be like very valuable yeah yeah that's huge and you know once what now that that dog's nice and stable like you say keep that activity going keep monitoring going all the different parameters that you're measuring because a uh, urinary tract infection comes along and it knocks out that balance of of control which yep. unfortunately does happen we can jump on it very quickly before it's a trip to the emergency vets because everything is completely unraveled and 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 things are in dire straits. So I, I guess, like you said at the very beginning, you're you're giving our pets the ability to to speak almost because they we're able to interpret their behaviours into what we understand as as problems and how powerful that can be. Yeah, speak is not um, talk, right? Speak is is is, is a way to communicate right communicate, there's, there's yeah. different ways to communicate right and 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 i do feel like technology wearables remote monitoring is the way for our pets to communicate yeah yeah absolutely and i think it's the way to it, it, it's the way to provide that next level of care that we all want to get in there early before serious problems are and i guess the added benefit from that that i see is that if i have a patient brought to me much earlier stage then maybe the diagnosis that i need to run uh, are much less to come to the answer uh the treatment given is is much less and can be very much more specific because i'm not dealing with all of these other factors that have have crashed because of that condition so actually it could be an awful lot one more effective two faster and three cheaper so isn't that what we all want for you know for our animals and, and cheaper vet bills more effective um communication and and working with your vet it's a it's it's really a win-win i think all around yeah um i'm told that uh, a lot of times so i touch uh, different pains um for not only for the vets but, but for the pet owner as well right so you you uh you vets are busy, right? So, so I mean, your days are like running around from one side to the other, right? With if you have data, if you have insights of what might be wrong, okay, you can streamline that case and focus on 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 any other cases. Um, at the same time, you will act early on, okay? So it's like less complicated solutions, less um, uh, 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 cases where you need to double down on different areas and try to understand how all of how everything correlates and and what that might be. Um, and so it's 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 definitely a win-win solution, uh, like for everyone in in uh, in in the industry. Just 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 because there's there's data. Just um, I mean, I was told several times that eighty percent the eighty percent of the job of a veterinarian is based on communication. Okay, and so yeah, uh, I do feel there's a lot of room to put data into the mix, right, uh, and put in, uh, technology into the mix, um, and that it will only lead to like more accurate results more accurate treatments more accurate care at the end of the day yeah yeah and a better quality of life um potentially a longer life for our for our furry family oh, yeah. members which is fantastic oh, yeah. just thinking Graham, about the, the practicalities what it, it's a collar like these things are worn on the collar they are a collar 
are they bulky what's what's involved for the pet parent to actually get this up and running and get this data collected and then how is that data interpreted and communicated in a way to the pet parent or to the vet in a in a readily accessible manner that is easy to understand without having to you know dive into graphs and all that kind of thing themselves yeah so um it's it, it's a sensor okay you can either um um uh, get get the sensor on your own color or you can buy our 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 color um it's 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 up to you okay and it's quite lightweight it's quite small we have like uh, 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 three, four pounds or, 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 or four or five kilo cats using it like 24 seven and completely okay with it. Um, so we've built it in a way that's comfortable for the pet because it's supposed to be on the pet 24 seven, right? That's the only way to detect like, like slight changes on a pet behavior. Um, and so we, we are currently working with, with, with clinics. Okay. So, um, if you are a pet owner and your clinic isn't, isn't yet using our, our technology, just, just, Put us in touch with them, um, and so we we built what we call this AI vet, this this artificial intelligence vet, which is like our technology that digests dozens of data points from the sensor, from the mobile app. It's dynamically looking for information based on evidences, um, and then transforms it and and interprets it in a way that's let's clinical significant for for the vet okay so we only tell the vet when something is wrong with one of their patients okay um and, and the pet owner also has the mobile app where they can see what their pet is doing there's a timeline weekly reports daily reports how the pet is sleeping and uh, things like that um so pet owners also get a, a better understanding how their pet is doing if something is changed um so they also keep an eye on it okay but but uh, the goal with maven is always to inform the vet early on when there's something wrong with one of their patients okay so that the vet can follow up with a pet owner as they see fit okay either keep an eye on it either grab the phone and call the pet owner eat them ask back at, at the clinic um to readjust the treatment or, or or do more 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 exams something like that um and so i mean you can go to our website maybe not pet there's all the information there um and it's 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 really it's really the peace of mind as pet owners have been waiting for 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 a long time. Um, it's now there, and it's 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 possible. Yeah, and that, how awesome is that? And I'm just thinking, even the fun features of you know how far has has your pet gone, how many steps have they done, or whatever. However, that's that that's hugely powerful as well because we can gate if we gamify exercise, for example, like the biggest preventable health issue from my my belief is is obesity and being overweight yeah. and if we can just encourage more activity and you know we all have our personal trackers and it's have i done my my ten thousand steps or whatever your target is for the day and you know you work hard to get there same for our pets and if that can if, if that can make them a little bit fitter and lose a little bit of um that extra chub then that's gonna even even something as simple as that can have a huge yeah. huge benefit yeah yeah we, we we knew that i mean um obesity is like the it, it's an entry door for all sorts of problems, right? So, so we know that. And so we've built the one of the first things that we've built at Maven, we call it like a zest score, which is like the perfect day for your pet. Okay. So this metric has all sorts of things on it. Your pet age, breeds, lifestyle, chronic conditions, where you are, um, the previous history, pre previous data for your pet. And so, you know, you need to close the loop. You know, you need to get to 100 on your Zest score to make sure that your pet has like the perfect day, okay? Um, it's not only activity, it's like in terms of the movement, there's like cognitive, uh, um, uh, like, like playgrounds and, and things that you could, go, you could do with your pet in terms of, of only cognitive. So it's, it's not only exercise. Um, and so all of that was with the, it's like a little game with the pet owner to make sure the pet has, as as have the perfect time. okay and if you grab two different pets and do the same walk it will contribute differently for their z score okay because different pets require different exercise different movement different different behaviors um and so we actually see people like engaging with a z score so if you reach home at 6 p.m or 7 p.m and you know you, the z score is it's still at 50 okay you know you need to go for a, a bigger walk or you know you need to play fetch with your pet to get to 100 right um and so people this is the, a good way to start 
um, like incentivize people to play with their with, with their pets and then exercise their pets and making sure they are like um, uh, uh, playing around or they are like entertained with, with something um, because they need that as well, right? And so um, that was one of the first things that we built uh, precisely to tell, tackle pets that are apparently healthy, okay? Uh, but they aren't, right? So we know that 60% of the pets, at least on the United States, uh, are obese. And just being 10% uh, over the ideal wave, like, like 10% into the obese zone, can reduce the lifespan of a pet for two and a half years. Okay, people don't know this. People don't realize this. Um, and so that was one of the first things that we built at Maven because we knew how important it was. Um, and, and yeah, people are engaging with it. People want to close the loops. Uh, people want to close the rings. People grab about that zest that it's now at 100%. And if they go hiking, okay, suddenly the zest is 150. Oh, it's a maximum. Um, and that's lovely to see. Yeah. And it's going to be good for us as well if we're trying to do that and go for the extra hikes and things. I love it. Yes. Um, and and I joke a, a lot that a lot of conversations end up with talking about obesity. It's so important. So we've ticked that box for, for this conversation as yes. well. Um, I guess, um, Graham, like the last thing that I wanted to talk about is because us vets, uh, myself included, sometimes can be quite um, old fashioned and quite resistant to change and quite skeptical. So I think we need a lot of um, encouragement from our pet parents when they hear about these new fantastic options. Uh, is, is that something that you you come across? And I guess if it is, what would your tips be for trying to get um, you know people who are interested in using Maven and getting that integrated with their vet clinic? How can they go about doing that? Yeah. So actually, we have some some situations where. Um, I mean, it happened both ways, like a pet owner reaching out to, to a pet owner that uses Maven, okay? And suddenly the vets want to try Maven as well okay? because they had one of their patients that were uh, uh, on the clinic, like showing, look, this is Maven app. This is what's saying about my pet. And, and, and just the mobile app was useful for the vet, okay? And the vet got excited and then curious um, and reached out to us, okay? And the other way around. So we have pet parents that start using Maven because their vet recommended. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the majority of where we spend our time is like, uh, um, uh, educating and, 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 and working with vets. So they realize this technology out there and, and can be beneficial not only for them. Okay. But for the pet owner and the pet, obviously. Um, and so to start working with Maven, um, it's, it's, it's quite simple. Okay. So we, uh, we do, very quickly, I can do a demo, um, how things work, what the clinic gets. We built everything. So it's like effortless for the vet. Okay. I know how important this is. Okay. So people, your patients, pet owner just need to take one of the sensors, one of the kit home, set up everything, and we start collecting that. Okay. And then it's a matter of when we understand that something is wrong early on, we will communicate with your vet either by email, either by a pager system, either by text message, either by integrating with any, any of the softwares they already use, right? So it's like, it's effortless, okay, for the vet. So now you can have like 24-7 remote monitoring of all your patients, okay? Now you can have early detection of illnesses or wrong treatments or treatments that, that are um, not being um, accurate, okay? effortlessly okay so you will only need to act when maven tells you that something is wrong okay and then obviously you should you should look at it and and, and see which is the best way forward with with the data point that we provided okay so it's it's actually quite simple we knew that um uh, uh, veterinarians and doctors wouldn't have the time to look at charts and dashboards and things like that if they want to double down they can it's there okay it's accessible um but the goal is like to quickly um, get a sense of if there's something wrong with one one of our patients and what, what there is. Okay, so patient A has been lethargic, reporting vomit, and there's a disruption on sleep patterns. Okay, so I know everything that I need to do my job as a vet, right? Um, and so that's that's how we built everything. So if if you work at the clinic and want to give it a try, uh, just let me know. Okay, g at maven.pet, as simple as that. We can book a demo, ship a couple of units and, and start as soon as possible. If you are a pet owner, um, make sure that your your practice, your clinic is already working with us. Um, if not, you can you can uh, put us in touch. And 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 yeah, it's really a shift on on the pet care industry. 
uh, just because of data. Okay, I, I, I can't stop saying this. Just, just having data. And day one that I work in, in, in the industry, I've been always telling people that we are blindly taking care of our pets. Okay, as pet owners, as vets, because because it, it it's true, right? So so we just see the pets and then and, and for the 10, 15 minutes, a consultation lasts, right? Um, and so Maven can change that. Okay, Maven can change from 10, 15 minutes a year, which is like the average uh, people take their pets to the vet to 24-7. Um, and that it's immense value uh, that will positively impact the industry. Yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, it is really the future. The future is here, here now. I just maybe I just had a thought pop into my head. You know, there's the, the TV show and um, the secret life of pets, and this is really kind of r- lifting the lid on that secret. It, it's letting <laughs> us know what they're actually, fe- you know, feeling, uh, and allowing us to to make a difference that that I can't really overstate the importance of early intervention. Um, and even just the peace of mind of knowing that your pet is healthy, that yep. that, that they're getting that that great zest score, so they're living a mentally fulfilling life as well, which is another uh kind of bugbearer of mine, the 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 dog that's sitting there unstimulated at home, um, yep. you know, bored out of its mind and really not living its best life. So even for our well pets that stay well, we can we can really make measurable difference to their to their life which is ultimately what we what we all want so uh Graham, it's been a fantastic conversation um I, i'm super excited about this as you can tell and i uh, and you can tell that you know we're we're kind of really touching the tip of the iceberg of what what's possible so so watch this space but thank oh, yeah. you so much so much for your time today and all of those links will be in the show notes and i'm sure people will be be reaching out and and, and jumping on this you know pretty pretty quickly yeah, hope so. Um, thanks, thanks for the conversation, Alex. It's always super exciting talking about about the pet industry and how technology could could help. Helping your pet live the happy, healthy life they deserve. <laughs> And if you'd like to learn more, then as always, I've taken all of the notes for you. You can find them over at callthevet.org. I'd also love to hear from you. Have you considered any pet wearable? Do you actually have one? There are several different ones, albeit not maybe as powerful as the the Maven option out there on the market. Have you tried them? What's your experience with them? I'd love to, to hear from you and see how these are being used out in the wild, if you like. And if you haven't used them, they're definitely something to think about. And as you can tell, I'm really excited about the the potential for these to make such a big difference to the life of your pet. For now, though, that's it from me for this episode. Until the next one, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is the Call the Vet show because they're family. That's it for this episode of the Call the Vet show. Be sure to visit callthevet.org to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. We'll see you next time.